I work at W. Ross McDonald School and I'm a teacher of the deaf blind. So I'm in the deaf blind unit. And this is, it's a separate school from the blind, um, the blind side. So there's a blind high school, the blind elementary, and I am in the deaf blind part of the school. Do you have? I think what their qualifications are is you have to have a minimum, a minimal of um, your deaf blind part one. But what I have is I have my special ed part one, I have my deaf blind part one. Um, I also have my primary, my junior, and my intermediate qualifications, um, my ABQ courses. Well, not all of the students are completely deaf or completely blind at the school. So um, what we use for the students, it's called like a total communication approach. So we say it, so you use the verbal, like verbal talking like you would with any other student. Um, we use sign language. Sometimes if a student has um, less vision, we'll use hand over hand signing. We use gestures. We'll use like cues. So for students who have a lot of vision loss, um, if we're cueing them that it's time to do something, we'll do it hand in hand. So we'll like um, almost like physically manipulate their hands. So we'll form the signs like, you know, okay, it's time to stand up and um, we're going to go to exercise. So we do uh, as much as we can to communicate with our students so that they understand what's going on. So there are some pretty basic signs that we always try to use with the students. Even if um, they don't sign back to us, we always try and use a total communication approach because in a lot of the cases with students, their receptive language, so what they receive and understand is greater than their expressive. So they're not able to express themselves, um, so, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't communicate with them as much as we can to let them know what's going on. One unit, it's different because each, we're set up into modules. So each module has three students in it. And um, if the students are in the residence program, there is the three students, there's the teacher, and then there are four other um, interveners, or um, they're called student support workers, um, that rotate shifts. Um, but I have day students. So I have three students who come every day, and then I'm the teacher, and then I have two student support workers. So it's, for my whole day, it's always one-to-one. -one, right? Room each. The way that the deaf blind program works is each student has their own program. So it's all individualized programs. So sometimes my one student might be doing something different than my other student. But in general, um, when students come in, there's some sort of calendar activity. Um, and throughout the day, we do a bunch of different... Everything's activity-based programming. So we do sensory activities. Um, we do things like swimming. Um, a lot of the students do physiotherapy every day because um, a lot of them, like my students are in wheelchairs, so physiotherapy is a really important part of the program. Um, we do things like baking, um, horseback riding, I'm trying to think what else we do. Um, some students do pottery or ceramics class. We do, There's, but then there's also the academic part, so depending on the student's program, um, they do things like, um, though maybe they have math goals or things in math or things in literacy. Um, my students don't though, so it just all depends on the module. Um, we have snack times just like any other regular school where we like to work on life skills and things like that for students. So it's, it's all different. It's very different from the public school system. They do not follow the Ontario curriculum. Um, what they have is with each student we have an individual education plan, so an IEP. So with each student's IEP, that is their curriculum for the year. So um, how it works in Deaf Blind is we go through the eight developmental areas of our students. Um, I can list them. So there's the life skills development, so we'll have goals on life skills. There's cognitive and conceptual skills development, social emotional, communication, orientation and mobility, gross motor skills, fine motor skills, and perceptual skills development. So each student will have goals within these developmental areas and that is their curriculum for the year. So as teachers we have to program our activity place program um, to help our students meet their goals. Our report cards, they, it is a provincial report card but it's an alternative provincial report card and it directly relates to the goals that have been set in our students IEP. Um, we have the same number 
that the regular school board has. So we had one at the beginning of the year. Um, we'll have one at the end. And then the one that's really different for us in the middle of the year, we just finished writing um, our picture report cards for our students. So this is a nice report card for parents because we actually take pictures of the students um, working at achieving or achieving the goals that are in their IEPs. So it's different. Um, well, my students, well, two of my students are in wheelchairs, so my classroom is wheelchair accessible. Um, another thing about the setup is it's our program's all about activity based programming. So our setup is almost, if you think of like a, a kindergarten classroom almost. So we have um, lots of activity centers. We have, each student does have their own desk. Um, but, um, well, not in all cases, but in the majority of cases, each student has their own desk. Each student has their own calendar system. So that's something that's different in our school. Um, sometimes these are, their calendar system are concrete cues um, that the students take with them before each activity. So if, if it was lunchtime, a concrete cue would be a spoon for maybe a student. And they, that's their anticipation guide to let them know that's what they're doing so that's their calendar other students actually have like calendars that we go through that are posted on the wall or on their desk other students have picture calendars so these are um, different books that outline the events of the day that have the, an actual photograph of the student in the picture so that's kind of a little different that each student has their own calendar system each student um, has usually their own desk or their work area. We also have just basic things that any classroom has. So we have um, a computer. Um, we have lots of, um, well, depending on the students, but in my classroom, we have lots of cause and effect toys. So these, because um, that's something that we work on with the students in my classroom. Um, we have, I'm trying to think. We have um, relaxation areas within our classrooms, a lot of us, because a lot of the times our students become really overwhelmed. So in my classroom, we have like couches and we have like beanbag chairs and places where they can go to relax and become overwhelmed or overstimulated from all the sensory information. Um, we have little, most classrooms, not all of them, we have little, little snack areas where, um, because we don't have like a giant um, lunchroom for the kids so when we have snack time it's always in our classroom so we have like a snack table or something like that but otherwise it's a regular classroom